Okay, so if we had class today, we would have done angled projectiles ground to ground. I'd ask you to do for Wednesday night's homework so a few more horizontal ones. So in the front side of your sheet, I had asked you to do 2, 4, 5, and 8. And the answers are there. So on Tuesday, if you have issues, we can go back and look at those. But right now, I'd like to spend a couple minutes just talking to you about angled projectiles. Because the ground to ground, or the... Um, Horizontal ones are really pretty easy. For angled projectiles, there are two different categories. One is called ground to ground, and the other will be creatively called non ground to ground. So for today, ground to ground. And what that means is whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually leaving from the ground, but wherever it leaves from, whatever height, maybe I throw it from shoulder height and someone else catches it from that same shoulder height. So it goes up and it comes back down to the same height that it left from. Okay? So it could be a soccer ball being kicked. It could be a baseball being thrown and caught. It's given some VI at some angle theta. That means it has a VIX and a VIY this time. So not like the horizontal ones where VIY was zero, now VIY will have a value. Asking you to find the delta dy won't make sense because it'll just be zero. It comes back to where it started. Um, instead, what we will ask you will be to find the maximum height reached, the delta dy max. And this is a project uh, uh, parabola, okay? And so its trajectory is symmetrical. When it hits the vertex from math, the highest point, you know that the second side is perfectly identical to the first side. The time it takes to get to the vertex, we will call delta tu, time it's taken to go up. And two delta tu will give us our total time. I call it TU and not half time because when we get to the non ground to ground, it'll still be time taken to go up, but it won't be half the full time. Okay? We also know that when it reaches the vertex, the VY at that point will be zero. It will slow down in the Y direction until it stops at the highest point and then it'll begin to speed up. Okay? So we're going to treat it. Do, uh, Treat it exactly like we did with horizontal. We're going to break them up into their x and y components. So in the x direction, we'll have vix is equal to vi. It's the adjacent side, so it will be cos theta, whereas viy will be vi sine theta. Viy will be going up. That's going to cause an issue that we didn't have to worry about last time because AY will still be 9.81 meters per second squared down. So it means now we're going to have to worry about putting our negatives in. AX will still be zero. Okay? I won't ask you to find VF ever here either, because if this is a parabola, then the VF is just going to be equal to the VI with the same angle. So you won't have to worry about finding VFs in ground to ground. So if we were to do an example here, let's say I do VI is 30 meters per second at an angle of 36.87 degrees. So you're kicking like a soccer ball or a football. It's going up and it's coming back down. Okay, and the three things we would ask you to find would be how long is it in the air? How high did it go, or maximum height reached? And how far away did it land? Okay, so we would start, well, I guess by putting our givens down, VIX, VI cos theta, AX, zero. We don't know delta dx, we don't know delta t. In the y direction, viy, vi sine theta, up. 
a y 9.81 meters per second squared down. So now to solve it, usually the place we start is looking at the time up. Okay, and so we would say, okay, so up, v f y will equal zero. When you get to the highest point, the y is zero. So if we, we use a y is equal to v f y minus v i y over delta t, and if it's up, we put a u here, then this will go to zero. Rearranging, we would have delta t u is equal to minus v i y over a y. In other words, minus v i y, which is v i sine theta over a y. So in this case, 30 meters per second, oops, running off the paper, sine of 36.87 over negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So there's a negative on the top from the subtracting sign, a negative on the bottom from gravity going down. And so when we do the math, 30 times 0.6 divided by 9.81 gives you 1.835. So our delta TU is 1.835 seconds, which means our delta T total will be twice that. So it'll be 3.6697. I rounded that 5 a little. Okay, that's part A. Part B wants to know maximum height. In other words, part B wants to know delta dy max. And we know that's going to be equal to viy delta t one half ay delta t squared. But what delta t do we use? We want the maximum height, which occurs right here at the halfway point. So this delta t has to be tu. Okay? If you forget and put the full time in, then you'll end up getting zero, because at the full time, the height it's at is back at the ground. So if you ever get zero when you're solving for delta dy max, it's because you've forgotten you used the full time. So back down here, we have delta dy max will equal VIY, 30 meters per second, sine of 36.87. And then the half time was 1.835 seconds, plus 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared, 1.835 seconds squared. Now the cool thing is, when you do this, the first term will be exactly half the second term. So when you do that first term times 30 times 0.6, you get, hmm, I think you get 33.028 meters. And then when you do minus the second term, so 0.5 times 9.81 times the time squared, you get 16.514 meters. So if you don't round your time too much, you end up with one half of your first term, because the second term will be half. So it'll just be a little check for you. You're like, oh, look, I got half, so it must be right. Last question asks, what is the range, delta dx? So it'll be vix delta t one half ax delta t squared. The ax term still goes to zero. This time I want the range. And so because it's the range, it's the full distance. So I'm going to use my full time here. I'm going to use this guy. And so it just becomes vi cos theta delta t. In other words, 30 meters per second cos of 36.87 times 3.6697 seconds. Okay, and then you just punch it in and you get your range. All right, so on the there's another example on the note sheet that I gave you, so take a look at that. And then homework on the back of your question sheet, how about numbers 1 to 4 on angled projectiles? Okay, and we'll go over them on Tuesday. All right, have a great long weekend. You have your little half sheet to do. You have your lab to work on and these four questions. Okay? Enjoy.